Sorin OS 18 is the new and upcoming release of the free and open source Linux operating system, designed to offer a familiar environment for users transitioning from Windows while still striking a good balance between traditional and more unusual workflows. What makes Sorin OS stick out in comparison to other Linux distributions like Ubuntu, Fedora or OpenSUSE is their very good documentation on their website, but also the help you get within the operating system itself. And this new release is packed with new design and usability improvements that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Let's get into it! This video was made possible by channel members of our community. If you want to participate in selecting new video topics, see what's going on behind the scenes and gain access to various tips and tricks, then please make sure to check out the join button or the link in the video description down below. Sorin OS is known in the Linux world, and also from my own experiences, as one of the best starting points that a new user that is switching over from Windows or just generally starting out can have. It comes with a traditional taskbar, a start menu that has slightly been reworked with this new release, the typical settings in the bottom right, but since it's based on the GNOME desktop environment, which is also the default on many other distributions, you also get many of its features, like an overview that lists all of your old maps. It's one of those features that had a huge impact on my decision moving to Linux a while back, since it just works so much better than the Windows Virtual Desktops implementation. You see all your open applications by pressing the Windows or Meta key, can easily redistribute them, drag and drop applications if you open the application menu with the double Meta key and just easily move them around. I find this especially useful on single monitor setups like a laptop for example. When it comes to desktop management in general, Sorin OS 18 comes with a new tiling assistant that, by default, is very similar to the one found in Windows 11, but they go a step further. By opening up the Sorin OS appearance settings under Windows and Advanced Window Tiling, you get access to various different settings, like Auto Tiling that supposedly places new windows into a fitting tile but just refuses to work for me, but you can also adjust the default layouts to create your own personalized one that you can then reuse every time you drag a window to the top. Really nice. Let's move on to some other changes. Sorin OS has always been supportive when users try to run Windows applications by telling you that, hey, you're trying to run an unsupported app and you need a special tool for that. It also warns users that not every program might be compatible. Sorin OS 18 takes this even further by utilizing an inbuilt database of over 170 apps to detect and offer the user compatible alternatives if they try to install them. If you launch the Microsoft Office Setup tool, for example, it tells you that you can either use the pre-installed LibreOffice as an alternative or just rely on the web version, which many don't even think about. Especially for unsupported software, this is a really nice way of telling the user, hey, this app might not work the way that you want, but here are some alternatives that you don't even need to look up. Since Sorin OS uses their own design and adjusts some default settings to ease users into Linux, LibreOffice is already set to mimic the Microsoft Edition very closely. That's also another huge entry barrier that is just being removed. When it comes to customization, Sorin OS received two new colors, yellow and brown. While I'm still not really a fan of the quite heavy tint in dark mode, the light mode looks incredible and gives the desktop a really clean and polished look. With the underlying desktop environment GNOME 46, you also get many performance improvements and changes to its core applications. The file manager now features a global search button and you can also click into the search bar without having to hold the control key first. Integrations-wise, online accounts now supports Microsoft OneDrive, which makes it easy to integrate it into it as well. When opening files in supported applications, you also get presented the new file picker that now also finally shows thumbnails properly for images and videos. Administrators or users that like to connect to their systems remotely should also be happy to hear that remote desktop sessions are now possible without requiring a user being logged in. A problem that has persisted for a long time but has now been fixed. And there have been many different improvements for the notification menu that are grouping similar alerts, improvements in fractional scaling if that is something you need to use and, like mentioned earlier, the overall speed was improved a lot, especially since the jump in GNOME versions is quite big, despite unfortunately not being the latest and greatest. Sorin OS 18 with its improved design, better tiling support, the detection of Windows programs and offering suitable alternatives, as well as the upgrade to a newer release of GNOME, make it a really great choice for both users that are switching over from Windows, but also power users that just want to have a smooth and solid experience. However, there are some caveats. 
While Sorin OS 18 is based on the stable release Ubuntu 24.04 and offers support up until 2029, it is still a stable release, meaning that it won't really change much up until the next big release. What should also be mentioned is hardware support. Now, while it certainly is much more up to date than their Ubuntu base, featuring the kernel version 6.14, it should be mentioned that it will probably always stay a bit behind other distributions in terms of bleeding edge hardware support. You got a new GPU that just released a few weeks ago? Well, even if a new Linux kernel that supports them has already been released, you might not get these changes in months or even years, depending on how quickly Sorin OS updates. However, from personal experience, this is usually not that big of a deal. And software-wise, Sorin OS is quite up to date. With Flatpaks being supported out of the box, you get access to a wide range of programs for communication, gaming and content creation. It's a really good operating system for someone that is just starting out with Linux, and even for someone that is already familiar with it. If you are unsure of what desktop environment or distribution fits your needs, then Sorin OS is something that you can't really go wrong with. It assists in so many ways, from having their own help page to inbuilt methods that lets users know about how good their experience on Linux can be. The hybrid approach of Windows design with the addition of GNOME's workspace functionality eases users into trying out this new workflow, making it just different enough to be seen as a new experience that is not directly comparable to Windows. And in my personal opinion, the best starting point for someone that is just switching over. And that's where I'll leave it. So what do you think of Sorin OS 18? Do you like the new changes or are there things that might still be missing? Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel and make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, where each sale helps to support various open source projects. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. I'm going to see you again really soon, but in the meantime, all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.